The fourth Bad Boys installment, Bad Boys Ride or Die, marks the 30th year of Will Smith and Martin Lawrence's run portraying Miami Cop duo Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett. From 1995 to 2024, these two have delivered action comedy gold on screen, and even though a fourth movie may be considered unnecessary, one could argue a sequel is warranted based on audiences wanting to see more of these two in theaters. From their time in Michael Bay's films all the way to nearly two decades later seeing older versions of the characters in the latest pair of flicks, the bad boys haven't missed a beat, no matter how long it takes between each movie's release. Speaking of which, why did it take so long to get us more movies. Apparently Bad Boys 2, which took 8 years to come out after the 1995 film, went through development hell, and same for Bad Boys for Life. Following Ride or Die though, could we see a 5th or even 6th movie get made? Nothing would surprise me now. I guess the studio got it together and realized, man, people love watching Will Smith and Martin Lawrence paired up. The box office certainly shows it too, so I'm thinking the executives thought to themselves, let's roll with it while both stars are still still young enough to participate in action movies. Fans clearly want more, and once again, like Bad Boys for Life, Ride or Die has provided the box office with much needed energy. But as a movie, throwing all things box office out the window, is this a worthy sequel? And just how necessary is Ride or Die? Well, if you ask me, I found this movie hella entertaining, despite it not being a completely necessary fourth installment. Bad Boys for Life ended the trilogy nicely, and it also took 17 years for that film's release, so getting an extra movie just four years after that is a little strange. But like I said, who cares? This movie is the definition of a summer blockbuster. As a matter of fact, if you make more, just make them summer exclusive. Everything about these films speaks summer blockbusters. So thankfully, this one was a June release and didn't get put on the January chopping block again. Anyway, just like our first three movies, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence completely carry Bad Boys Ride or Die. I'm sorry, but you can't make a Bad Boys movie without them. They share electric chemistry. As usual, the banter is so funny. I don't know if there's a better comedic duo in Hollywood right now. My theater constantly erupted in laughter after every back and forth exchange. Martin Lawrence's out-of-pocket dialogue mixed with Will Smith's explosive anger will never get old, which is remarkable considering both men are in their mid to late 50s. And I'm telling you, when you compare this side-by-side -side with the original, neither actor misses their mark. They're the same old hilarious cop pairing we remember from the beginning. They show us no signs of age. Some people might still be mad at Will Smith because of the Chris Rock incident, but whatever dude. His charisma was missed the last few years, and I'm ecstatic to see him acting again. Now, in terms of action, it's of course popcorn fun in Ride or Die. You get exactly what you came for. This is just a really enjoyable action movie from start to finish. There's little downtime. You get all the over-the-top action you're looking for, and thankfully the movie doesn't skimp on blood either. Same with the cuss words. Sometimes as franchises age, I worry they'll switch their MPAA rating from R to PG-13 because it has been done before in the past in hope of growing a film's audience. But not bad boys, they stick to their roots, and this movie is just as bloody as every other installment, which I love. Actually, this may be an even crazier entry to the franchise than bad boys too. Tons of explosions, insane kills, you definitely have to suspend your disbelief at this point in the franchise. I mean, no way they survive any of what happens here in real life. But come on, that's what makes it fun. Bad Boys 4 knows exactly what it is and rolls with it. What's great about these movies too now are how many actors they fit in. The first movie was really just Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Taya Leone, Joe Pantoliano, and our very mediocre villain. Meanwhile, nowadays we've got Jacob Scipio, Paula Nunez, Vanessa Hudgens, Alexander Ludwig, and Yoan Griffith, just to name a few. Plus, the film this time around offers a plethora of out-of-nowhere cameos that were hysterical. The cast somehow just keeps expanding, and I'm all for it. Overall, as a movie, I can't say the quality has taken any sort of dip in Bad Boys Ride or Die. All four films are very entertaining and funny. There isn't one thing that sticks out as absolutely terrible, especially not in this one. The editing and camera work are top tier, the script is extra sharp. Like I said, this movie is full on comedy and action. It doesn't waste your time. Its length doesn't overstay its welcome. It's just a fast paced, action packed comedy gold ride to kickstart the month of June and ultimately came at the best time for the movie industry. Although I must admit the franchise is venturing towards Fast and Furious territory, the more movies there are, the more ridiculous it gets. 
Yeah, sure, the first movie starts out very over the top in classic Michael Bay fashion, but these recent movies have taken it up a notch. With each entry, you get more characters, more crazy action scenes, and more explosions than you can imagine. So if you're not a fan of films like this, you're gonna be done with this movie right as it begins. But let's be real, if you're making sequels, you gotta keep going bigger and bigger just like the Fast and Furious films. There's no other approach. If I had to mention a rather big flaw of mine that sticks out, it's right or die's plot. In comparison to Bad Boys for Life, the plot gets a little too convoluted and steals a bit too much from the third film. Whereas the previous movie was more straightforward and actually felt unique. I get it, you need some kind of plot that makes sense and kind of like how the first two movies feel similar, this one has many similarities to Bad Boys for Life. But there were moments I found it difficult to keep up with everything going on as far as the villain scheme goes, and I really do wish they made this movie feel a little more original to the franchise. But that's just me. After nearly 30 30 years as the bad boys, I take it as a huge accomplishment for Martin Lawrence and Will Smith to keep going without missing a beat playing these characters. If they can keep it up at this pace, they should make a couple more films. Because after all, why not? They're having fun, these movies are very entertaining, I don't care that they're starting to feel like Fast and Furious. Honestly, I haven't laughed so hard watching a comedy franchise in such a long time. So the more laughs I get from these two, the better. Anyway, what are your thoughts on the Bad Boys movies? And in particular, Bad Boys Ride or Die. Also, would you like to see them make more films in this franchise? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. Of course, as always, thank you all so much for watching this review. Make sure you like this video and sub to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'll catch you later this week with my Bad Boys ranking. See you then.